LG washer door boot replacement through the front is what we'll cover today and it is faster and easier than taking off the front panel. So this will be a pretty quick and easy tutorial for you. Should only take you about half an hour to complete and it'll get rid of a moldy and icky door boot. So while you're here, please subscribe. This is Scott the Fix-It Guy and I'm going to be guiding you through this really easy door boot replacement. There's also bonus material at the end, so I hope you can stay and get some of those extra tips at the end. So this is where you would find the model number to order your new door boot replacement. And we'll put a link in the description below for the most common door boot for the LG washing machine. So number one, we're gonna remove the spring clamp. You can use a flathead screwdriver. I'm just using a knife here to get underneath the spring clamp pull it towards you and then you can just grab it and then pull it all the way out of its rim and then once that's off you can then take the front of the door boot and pull it off and then fold it in toward the inside metal spin basket that's going to give you more room to work next we're going to use some pliers to remove this spring clamp that's connected to the drain line at the bottom of the door boot. So we get that off. And we're noticing there's some junk in there, so we're gonna pull it out. You could even use like uh, maybe a skinny screwdriver to help get all that stuff out of there. So we're number four, cleaning out that drain line, making sure it's nice and clear before we put on the new boot. So a needle and those pliers would work. Even a straightened paper clip could work to get into that small area and get out that stuff. In this case, it looked like it was probably some dog fur had built up over time. So if you have pets and you're washing like the blankets and such, that's very likely that that would be clogged up too. Number five, we're gonna clean the bottom of the glass bowl so that you get a nice contact with your new door boot and that'll eliminate any kind of leaking. That's a really important step. Here's a tool you can use that it's going to really help to get off the rear spring clamp. They're kind of expensive, but well worth it to get this job done quickly. So we have a link in the description below. So we're going to remove the rear spring clamp by getting it, the tool into the two hooks on the spring clamp. And we're going to pull toward us to pull that spring clamp off. And again, you can see how that's working. We're going inside and we're squeezing the handle and that's making the spring clamp a little looser and then we can just pull it out. We're getting it off of the rubber rim that it sits in near the back of the rubber dory gasket. There we go. Let's just give you a little tutorial how that spring clamp works. This hooks over and then I'm gonna show you just how that tool goes in there and into those two holes. And then when you squeeze, it's going to pull on that spring and it's gonna make that spring clamp bigger. We can also use that to squeeze when we're putting the spring clamp back on near the end. So again, we'll put a link in the description below for this new door boot. So number seven, we're gonna remove the old door gasket. We're just gonna pull it out. We can see that this is pretty moldy it's got that black mold in there which is just built up over time usually because people close the door and the mold builds up it's always good to keep that door open a little bit in between uses so number eight we're cleaning the plastic tub rim just gonna use a paper towel maybe a little windex on there to clean that up that's getting some of the mold off of there you just want to get rid of as much of that black mold as you can So that's the plastic outer tub. And that rim is what the new door gasket is going to slip onto, the back of the door gasket. So we're just making sure it's all nice and clean. I'm grabbing this um, metal spin basket and pulling on it, and I can see that that's really tight. That's a good, that's a good uh, rear um, bearing. It's not, it's not worn out. So there's the next step, we're putting some liquid detergent into this 
back rim of the door boot and that's going to allow that back rim to easily be put onto the plastic rim of the tub. This is a really important step. It makes it a lot easier to get the back of that door boot secured onto the rim. So now we're lining up the top of the door gasket and we're going to push it into the 12 o'clock position there at the top. We're going to push in with our thumbs until we feel it click into position. And now we're going to make sure we get the drain holes of the bottom lined up at the six o'clock position. We're going to use our thumbs to, well, first we're going to go ahead and push in with our thumbs to get the back rubber rim of the door gasket to click into the plastic rim of the tub because we want to make sure that's really clicked in all the way around. We're just using our thumbs to push in and you'll be able to feel it. It'll, it'll actually feel like almost like a click feel when it locks in. And then once you do that, you go down another couple inches and just keep pushing in all the way around. It really helps to push in the front of the door boot into the spin basket. And that's just going to make it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. And just keep using your thumbs to push in until you feel confident that that back rim of that door boot is fully secure onto the plastic rim of that tub. This is where you want to take your time. Just keep going around. I like to start at 12 o'clock and then go out toward 1 o'clock and then go out toward 11 o'clock and then out toward 3 o'clock and then out toward 9 o'clock and just keep going around and around until I get to 6 o'clock at the bottom. And I know it's really in there nice and tight. So double check that it's fully locked onto the tub. And next thing is we can put on the rear spring clamp. So again, I'm just checking everything, making sure it's in there. And I'm going to make sure that this drain hole lines up with that drain. I'm going to put on the spring clamp now onto the bottom of that hose. I'm not going to connect the hose yet. I'm just putting it onto the bottom of the hose. I squeeze in with these special pliers. Any kind of pliers will work, but these are special pliers that make it a little bit easier. Now I'm going to put the spring clamp into a ridge, a rubber ridge, all the way around the perimeter of the back of the door boot. And I want to have the spring part of it out to the three o'clock position to my right. And I can put the tool into position, get it into each one of those metal circles on the spring, and then I can squeeze and that's going to allow me to get the one um, metal circle onto the hook part of the spring. I'm going to pull the whole tub toward me with my left hand and my right hand is going to guide with the tool that round part onto the hook. Just take your time here. Pull it towards you as much as you can so you can see better what you're doing. So I can see that I've got it hooked up and now I'm just going to feel around the perimeter and make sure that that thing's really in, in place. So it feels like it's really into that rubber groove. That's good. I'm going to put some of this liquid detergent onto, this is just stuff we use when we are washing our clothes. Use that same detergent to go onto this metal spring clamp. I want to lubricate it. That's going to make it a lot easier for it to go onto the front of the door gasket. You know, it goes onto a rubber rim. When it's lubricated, it's a lot easier to put on. When I put this thing on, first I'll go ahead and put the rubber rim onto the metal part of the front panel. So I'm using my thumbs again to make sure that's seated all the way around that metal rim. And then there's going to be a, a ridge that I can put the front spring clamp into. I'll start at the 12 o'clock position and I'll use my thumbs 
to guide the spring clamp into that ridge and I'm going to be stretching with my thumbs and I'll get the spring down at the six o'clock position. So now I'm using my thumbs to push out to get that spring clamp back in. Got the spring down at the twelve at the six o'clock position. And last thing is I'll just shut it, shut the door, and I'll turn it on and make sure I don't have any leaks anywhere. So we filled it, it's spinning, no leaks, that looks really good. There's a little bit of bonus material, this is just indicating how sometimes we can get a buildup of um, film on this lint filter and if you use a nice old toothbrush you can knock off all that and get nice and clean and clear. Sometimes this is caused by using the drier lint sheets which we recommend not using these things. So you want to get nice and clean, put that back in. Another bit of the bonus material, we want to clean the moisture sensor. This can get a kind of a waxy buildup on it too. You could use some Windex or alcohol. I'm just using a wire brush to clean these two metal parts here and that's the moisture sensor. Those metal bars, you want to get them as shiny as you can. So again, alcohol would work. Windex could work, and this is just using abrasion to get those super clean. Okay, this is looking good. So the last part of the bonus material is coming up right here. If you ever want to just do a spin drain cycle on your LG, you can start it and then press the spin button until it shows high speed spin. It'll show a 15 minute cycle, press start, and it'll drain all the water out and it'll gradually work up to high speed spin. So you don't have to do a whole cycle. You could just do just a spin cycle if you want to. So again, you turn it off first, turn on, then turn on the power, press the speed, spin speed button until it goes to high, the high speed and then press start. We can see it's doing the spin cycle and it's gradually counting down. Thanks so much for watching our video today. I hope that this video has saved you some time and money. And if so, could you please press down in the video description below the donation link and send us a donation so we can keep this service going. Thanks again. And if you have any questions about this repair, could you contact me at scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.